Hi guys, I'm Bobsy, and in this video we're continuing off from where we left off last time, getting essentially the basic player movement working. Now, one thing that I just want to touch on really quickly is in order to make this feel good, we need to set linear damping to 10. Otherwise, we become very floaty, right? So if I set this to zero, we become very floaty. So you can see as we move, sort of activate weird and we float a little bit and stuff like that. We don't really stop properly, as you can see. Whereas with linear damping 10, we do actually stop quite responsibly and on the spot, which is good. However, if now I take the player up in the air, you'll notice how they fall very slowly as well, which obviously isn't great for, let's say, jumping and just <laughs> generally using gravity for anything. So we're going to just very quickly go on to solving that first. So let me first of all make a new serialized field private float. The way that I want to solve this is adding essentially planar damping, right? Planar damping is essentially just damp damping on the, well, flat plane. And we can do this very easily by just simply adding sort of a counteracting uh, velocity here. So if we just do rigid body dot add force and we do it in the negative horizontal direction times the planar damping. Uh, that should essentially be about it. Now we have a force that goes against our player at all times, but only on the flat plane. So if we go into the player, I can add linear damping to, ten, to zero, have the planar damping be 10. And now we should see that we move around very responsively again still. And now you can also see if I take the play of an air, we'll fall with gravity properly. I'll do it over here so you can see it a little better. And there you go. So now that was just very easy and quick to add. Now let's try and also add a jump. Now a jump, so let's go through the input really quickly, right? So the input essentially only happens once. So let's go to public pool and let's make a jump pool. Now, the get final input only happens once per tick or once per simulation, essentially. So if we do input.jump equals to input.get key down key code dot space, we'll essentially have one issue, and that is get key down only calls for a single frame. So only if the tick, or essentially if we click right on the frame where the tick is ran, then sure, this will work, otherwise it won't. Now you can always do this, which means we can hold the jump button and maybe that's functionality that you want. But this still means that, let's say you're running a low tick rate, let's say 10 ticks. Uh, that still means that if they click quick enough in between ticks, they still won't actually jump the jump on the register. And this just generally doesn't feel that good. So that's actually a better way of going about it. And that's what's called update input. With update input, we can now handle the jump. So we can do input.jump. And then similar to what we do before, so we do input.getKeyDown, keycode.space in my case. However, obviously this now, with this logic here, get key down is false when it's not on a frame where it was pressed, meaning jump will essentially just very quickly be set to true and then set back to false. And just for reference, update input calls every frame, similar to update. So that's why here we can actually use get key down, except obviously the input is still only used uh, on tick. So what we can do is we can say or. This is essentially the same as saying if get key down is true, or this was already true, then make this true. It's pretty much just a short way of writing it. So if I just go back and I add this little or here, we're essentially just saying if this is already true, or this is true for this frame, make it true, which means it'll stay true. And it goes back to default every time the input has been used, right? So after the tick has ran, this goes back to false. So now it'll actually work with just a click. So now let's go into the simulate and let's set up the jump. So I'm just going to do if input.get, oh, sorry, not get key, what the hell, if input.jump, uh, then we want to handle the jump. So we can do rigidbody.addForce, and let's do a vector3.up, and let's make some kind of uh, jump force, and let's add it with the force mode of impulse. Let me go up and add this jump force here, so we'll do jump force. I don't actually know what this should be set to, let's just try 7, for example. Uh, and let's go out and now try this, see if it works. So here we are, I'm going to hit jump, and there we go, now we jump. So 7 might be a little bit high, unless we want to be on the moon, of course, then in that case 7 seems kind of perfect. Uh, but I'm just going to tone it down a little bit, let's try jump force 5, to see how that feels. Jump, and yeah, I think that kind of works. Uh, cool, so now we have a uh, movement that works pretty well. All right, let's however still make it so we actually have a ground check, because right now obviously we can just keep jumping for as long as we want, and this might not be your intended functionality. Yeah, I know at least that it's not mine. So let's set that up. So let's just do a sphere check, essentially. That's how I prefer doing it. So let's just do private float. Uh, and then let's just do ground check radius. Um, and for good measure, we can also do a mask. So let's do a private layer mask. 
ground mask. Essentially anything that we should be able to jump off of. Now let's just make the ground check radius something like I don't know, 0 0.2. Um, and now let's just make a our own method here. So let's make a private pool. That can be is grounded. Uh, and here, what I want to check is, let's make it a bit performant here. So let's allocate a private static collider array so that we can keep track of the collision. So ground colliders equals to new collider array. And yeah, we can just default it to some kind of size. So not default it, but set it to some kind of size. And now we can do var hits equals to physics dot, and I believe it's called overlap sphere non alloc. There we go. And then we can set the position. In my case, that's just going to be the feet of my player, which is that transformed the position. This can be at ground, or this can be using ground check radius. We want to output to the ground colliders, and we want to use the ground mask. And there we go. It doesn't actually need to output it, of course. That's my bad. And now we can iterate through all of the hits. So we can take for each hit and then ground colliders. Uh, and then we can essentially check the colliders. Now, I guess in our case, we actually know that if it even hit anything. So I guess in this case, we can just return if hit dot or if hit is greater than zero. That should actually be fine. That means that we did hit something that's in the mask. Uh, but this is also where you could loop through it and filter out whatever you hit to make sure if there was anything else or not. Um, but essentially here we can just do jump and we are grounded. And that should pretty much be it. So now let's go and check our ground check. Oh, and let's also just quickly draw some gizmos. I always really like having gizmos. I find it handy. So uh, on draw gizmo selected. Let's do gizmos.color equals to yellow. And let me do gizmos.draw wire sphere. And let's do it at the transformed position with the ground check radius. That should pretty much do it. So we should be able to see exactly how it is ground checking. So there we go. Now we can see the yellow sphere here. And I think that seems about fine to me. We can even make it a little bit smaller, maybe 0 0.1 instead. Uh, and let's also just quickly make a layer. Oh, actually, we already have a player layer from the other tutorial, so I'm just going to use that. So set this guy to the player layer. And of course, make sure to here set the mask to everything but the player layer. And let's try and go now. So now when I spam space, you can see it, it only works once. Now we can also add a cooldown to the jump. So let's actually do that just to make sure there's no weird bugs where if they spam it too quickly, they'll be able to forever float up or something like that. Um, so the way that we do that is we have to add it inside the state, some kind of timer. So let's do a public float, uh, and let's just call it jump timer, for example, or I guess jump cooldown actually might be a better name, jump cooldown. And then up here we can do a, let's say jump, yeah, let's just call it jump cooldown and only want to be able to jump every 0 0.2. That's fine. Uh, cool. And so up here, let's also do and the states dot jump cooldown is less than or equal to zero and so now we can just count it down so let's just always do that we can do it up at the top that's why i like always when things have to be counted down we can do minus equal to delta and so if it's less than or equal to zero we can jump if not we will perform the jump and then also set the state dot jump cooldown equals to the jump cooldown field that we set up here at the top uh, and that should basically it now we should also have a jump cooldown and a good way of testing this would actually be to, in the is grounded, just always return true right now. This way we know that we should technically be able to spam it and fly away. Let's go here. If I try and spam it now, you can, uh, let me try and put a longer time here. Jump cooldown one. Now let me try and when I just spam it right now, you can see that also doesn't work because it has a cooldown of one. If I put it 0 0.5 and I spam it, you can see that I'll slowly start making my way up, but only, only every half a second or so. Um, so cool. So now we have a cooldown that also works just to make sure we don't have any weird business with that. Uh, and let's go back and make sure we don't always return true. Uh, and cool. Now we have about 100 lines of code, actually even a little bit less. Uh, and we have what I think is a pretty good first person controller script. Uh, yeah. And I think let's in the next one, try and get into some health and some shooting, shall we? So cool. I hope that you liked the video. Please do remember to leave a like, comment, and subscribe. Let me know what else you'd like to see in this little FPS series. I am really just winging it. And other than that, I just hope that you have a wonderful day.